Hey guys and welcome to the fifth episode of our advanced inventory system tutorial in Godot 3.1. In this tutorial we'll take a look at signals and custom signals and how you can use them to link all your different game elements together and really go for that game feature status. We will be linking our loop panel with our graphical user interface and our collision detections of our chest to really bring everything together into a single package. Stay tuned because this is going to be awesome. Today we're going to be starting where we left it off last time within our map scene and our three instant chests. Today we'll start by editing the script of the loot chest and we are going to be adding functionality to link the loot chests to our graphical user interface. In the previous episode we have already linked the signals for body entered and body exited to the script but we have only set it to print entered and exited within the um, game engine editor. Today we're going to be expanding the functionality by start creating custom signals. Your custom signals are defined at the top of the script. In this case, case I've copy pasted in a little bit of uh, text that is going to create two different signals for us. One is an in-loop range and one is an out-loop range. The difference between these built-in signals that we have created in the last episode and the custom signals is that the custom signals trigger whenever you say in the code that they should trigger. And the advantage of a custom signal over a normal signal is that the signal can be captured by any node that is currently loaded within the game scene. That means that if you have an instant scene, that signal can also be captured by other nodes within the game scene tree. This will make more sense as we as we go along. Instead of print entered and print exited, we're going to be adding a emit signal command. Emit signal in loop range. And we're going to be saying the same for our body exited, but then we are out loop range. Now with that done, all we need to do is make sure that our graphical user interface is listening to the signal which is emitted so it knows when to react. To do so, we're going to go back, back to our map scene and we are going to select the canvas layer and add a script. Now to this canvas layer, we're going to be adding a little piece of code on the ready function. What this piece of code does is that as soon as the scene tree is finished loading, it's ready, it's going to go to its parent, which is in this case the map scene, no oh, excuses, and it's going to find the node chest1, which will be right there, it's going to connect to the custom signal in loop range within the chest1 uh, scene, it's going to connect that signal to itself, and it's going to be connecting it to the in loop chest in range, on loop chest in range, excuses. So that means that whenever we create a function here with that particular name, that this function will be executed as soon as this piece of code has catched the signal that is being emitted by our chest. So to test this, we can simply print, it works, or whatever you want to type, and we can play the scene. We have the same set up as we had last time, but now it prints, it works. And now we have connected our chest to our graphical user interface. However, we don't get one chest, we got three chests. And we could be repeating this piece of code over and over again, but that means that you have to either put the same amount of chests on every single map, or you constantly have to verify whether a chest exists. And that means you're gonna get quite a lot of lines of code. It would be much easier if we can sort of iterate over this loot chest, and we can, of course. When we go back to chest, and we add the, the chest scene from which all these child nodes inherit from, these are all instances of this scene. So if we go to the main scene, and we add within the uh, node none groups, and we add this chest1 scene to loot chests as a uh, uh, node group. You can see right here it's in a node group and if I go back to the map scene they're all in a node group. Now with that done we can start creating a function that will iterate over each and every single one of the loot chests or the nodes within the group loot chests which of course is all our loot chests and we can connect them one by one. Let's do that now. 
So to do that, I'm going to go back to my canvas layer and I'm going to be replacing the line of code here with another piece of code. That's going to go for i for every case that within the tree get notes in group loot chests. So in other words, for every node within the group loot chests, it's going to connect the in loot range to itself on the function in loot chest in range. And I've also immediately added the second line to connect the out loot range connect to self on loot chest out of range. Now, of course, we don't have this function yet. So let's quickly add this here. And we can test this as well. And we're going to print and this works too. Now we can play the scene and we should get that signal. It works. This works too. And we should get that on every single chest that we approach. And that works for every single chest. On to the next part. Now, we don't want these functions to just print something within the editor. No, we want the player to be able to see, hey, you can loot something here. We want the player to be triggered. So instead of print it works, we're going to be copy passing a piece of code in here, which first defines a new variable. In this case, we call it loot texture. And it's gonna load the gold icon that we've used before in our inventory system. Now we get the node map scene control main UI control main UI icon, which is the selected node right there, which is the icon, the texture rectangle within our button, within our circle. And we set that texture to be equal to the loop texture we've just loaded up right there. Now, of course, we also need to make sure that um, uh, our texture is again deleted when we are outside of loop range. So we're going to be replacing this it works too with the same control icon then we set the texture to be null now when we reload the scene again and we walk with our player close to the chest the gold icon appears in our ui icon or our ui button this is a pressable button we could click it but we haven't set this button up to work yet but the player now knows hey when i click this button probably something's going to happen which involves gold and loot and not but if i move away from this chest the loot icon disappears. And in the same way, you could set up the UI to be close to a NPC, be an exclamation mark or a question mark that you can talk with them, or maybe a, a sort of text balloon. Um, and yeah, you can, you can think of all kinds of different icons that could appear within this user interface, depending on what is close. Now, next up, we wanna make sure that that button actually works, that the loot panel actually appears for the player. To do that, we're going to the main UI control, which is the button that we have defined in the previous episode within our graphical user interface. We're going to go to node signals and we're going to say on press, we're going to connect this standard signal to our um, canvas layer. Now, as we connect it, our editor is going to create a new code for us and it's going to say on main UI control pressed. Now we want this button to do different things depending on which icon is being displayed or in other words depending on what's, what is in the vicinity of the player at that particular time. So this button is going to have different functions. So in order to do that we need to define a state of the button that it is in. Now first of all when the game starts, we want a variable that says main UI control is none. In other words, it's not doing anything right now. It's nothing is close and just don't press it. And as soon as the loot chest in range function goes, uh, hits, something is in range. So then we can set this main UI control um, to loot. Next up, we can then define on this function that if the main UI control is equal to loot, then it should be adding the loot panel to this scene. Now, to do that, we need to we can we have two options. We can either have the loot panel preloaded and use a show hide command as we've done before in this tutorial series or we can load the loop panel as an instance from um, uh, its, its uh, 
main scene and make it as a child of this scene. The advantage of the second option is that the loop panel is not constantly loaded in the background and thereby you free up resources when the player is just walking around not finding any loot chests. The game will run more smoothly, more easily and, and or the player device needs a lower um, hardware requirements because the game won't be as heavy. So that has the advantage, so let's do that. We add a little bit of, bit of code which is going to be defining a new variable, in this case going to be the loop panel, which will preload the scene for us as an instance. And then we're going to be adding a child to the canvas layer, which is going to be that variable that we just preloaded with our instance loop panel. So if we press the button now, when there is a gold icon, it will pop up the loop panel. But and in order to, for us to make sure that nothing appears once we have been at a chest, we need to make sure that when we're out of range, we be setting back this main UI control to none. So nothing happens when we don't press a button. And just to be completely done, we're also going to be creating an else if to make sure that the uh, signal is properly handled every time you press it, even when there is nothing. Oh, we already had that. Now, when we run the scene, uh, when the column right there, excuse me, when we run the scene and we press the button now, nothing happens. When we enter the range of a loot chest, uh, we get the call icon, I'm not going to press it yet. When we are exiting again, again, nothing happens because we have reset the main UI control variable to none. When we are in range of the loot test and we press it, our loot panel appears and it generates the random loot as we have implemented that code within episode three of this tutorial series. However, now that we've done that, we can close the button because we haven't set up the signal for the close button yet. So let's do that now. To do that, we first have to go to our loot panel scene, which we have right here. When we open this, we have to go to the button that says close, and we're going to be adding a built-in um, signal for this when we press it. We connect it to the loot panel, and as we have the button right here, we want when this button is pressed, we want the main scene, the main map scene, to delete the instant child from our game. In other words, we have to be connecting a custom signal again to the graphical user interface. So we create our signal on top of our script and is going to be close loop panel. We're going to be using this signal right here. We admit the signal closed loop panel. Next up, we need to make sure that our graphical user interface listens to this particular signal. So we're going to go back to our canvas layer where we have um, previously connected these signals of our loop chests. In this case, we cannot add a piece of code on the ready function here because the moment the game scene is loaded, the ready function is, is ready, but we don't have a loop panel yet. We only add this loop panel later on and therefore it cannot listen to the instance yet. So instead of adding the, uh, the command here, we're going to be adding it right down here. We're going to be adding it under the main UI control pressed and we're going to be adding it straight here on the add child. We add our little bit of code that's going to get the note loop panel that we've just added as a child. We connect the closed loop panel signal we just um, created, connect it to itself and on closed loop panel. As we do this, we need a function for that. So we create that function that we just defined. And under here, we're going to get the note loop panel that was just added recently and we're going to Q3 this little piece of uh, or this particular node so that the loop panel is gone. Now as we play the game we approach a chest, we can loot the chest, we get our random loot generation, we can close the chest. However there's still a bit of a problem here because 
I can go away from this chest and reapproach it and I can loot it again and it's gonna restart the random loot generation which we don't want because basically I can just continue clicking until I have the item that I need in other words we have created an indefinite item generator for our player to abuse so right now we have done a lot when it comes to signals and next time we're gonna give our loot chest a memory we're gonna give it a memory on whether it has been opened before yes or no and we're going to be adding a memory for what's in the chest if the player left anything the first time it opened it then we're gonna create a loot panel functionality that will verify whether the loot chest has been opened before and will display any remaining contents that are still there or if it never opened been if it has never been opened before will then run the random loot generation uh, code but that's for the next episode. This time I hope you enjoyed this episode and that you find this episode on signals and custom signals helpful to connect all your different game parts together. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up, hit that like button. And if you're curious about the next episode, hit subscribe, hit that bell icon. And yeah, if you have any questions, put them down in the comments below. And as always, you can find me on Twitch. I stream my own game development every Tuesday and Thursday from 9 p.m. in the evening European time, but American times both East and West Coast are down in the description as well for your, um, for your convenience. I hope to see you next time to really give that loot chest some memory and to really be expanding on this inventory system as we go. See you next time.